since we're in the don't trust anybody and have your own sovereignty and we're in the libertarian moment, let's go to our crypto correspondent. It's Crypto Corner with Shema. <laughs> so it's, my, it's part of my production company. I'm now doing Crypto Corner with Shema. That'll be next week's cold open. <laughs> I thought it would be good to talk about crypto for a couple of reasons. One is because we just had the halving at the end of April. When oh, this did that is happen? The, the halving mm -hmm. is where, just for folks that don't know, the way that Bitcoins are created is by solving these complex mathematical algorithms that take a lot of time and energy and, and money. And when you solve it, you get rewarded with some number of Bitcoin. And roughly every four years, that reward gets cut in half. It's called a halving. And this week, I saw somebody who reminded me all of this, and I just want to give this guy a proper shout out. So his name is Wences Casares. And Wences, in Silicon Valley, I would say, really was agent zero of Bitcoin. He was the one in 2010 that introduced it to me. I remember he reminded me of the story, actually. We were at Orange Hummus, and he's like, <laughs> he's Argentinian. He's a great, so I'm going to try to copy his like, That's a math. Uh, you have to buy the Bitcoin. So... I heard the story. I fell in love with it. I remember I called my family office. I'm like, buy me a million of these things. And he was like, or a million dollars worth. And he was like, are you crazy? And I was like, no, there's just a little appetizer. We'll get to the main, <laughs> main course. Anyways, he has done a phenomenal job of understanding and proselytizing Bitcoin. And I want to thank him because he really put me onto this. But he mentioned something to me when I saw him a couple of days ago, which is you should really look at the pattern of Bitcoin after a having, And so I was really curious. And so I had a guy on my team, Quentin, put this together. So Nick, let me just, let's go to the first page. So why is this interesting? So here's a little Bitcoin price analysis for you guys. So there's been a couple of having cycles that have happened. And I asked him to go back and look at the price performance one month after a having, three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, and 18 months after a having, And what you notice is that there are these moments initially where essentially when you go through a Bitcoin halving, people are sort of reassessing what's happening and they're trying to figure it out. That's sort of what I would say is happens in the first month and roughly what also happens in the first three months. But then within six months to a year and 18 months of these things, there are these crazy price appreciation cycles that happen. So that's what this page shows, which is, you know, 18 months after the first halving, the Bitcoin price returned 45x. After the second halving, it returned almost 28x. And after this third halving, it returned almost an 8x, which is really incredible returns in such a short period of time. If you go to the next page. And so if you, if you graph that, this is what it starts to show, which is what is this price performance after each of these halving cycles? Now, why is that interesting? Well, it's interesting because on top of this having, which theoretically, if history is a guide, we should see some price appreciation. Obviously, the other thing that's happened is we've commercialized Bitcoin. And we talked about this sort of as my big prediction for 2024, which is these ETFs are really going to allow Bitcoin to cross the chasm and have its sort of central key moment, right? And so if you apply... The averages, and again, these are just averages. They're by no means predictions. Okay, so I just want to qualify that. Yeah, these are this just is not financial advice. It's not financial advice. These are just, just guesses. Data. We took these and we applied it to the price of Bitcoin. And if you go to the next page, you start to see what could happen if you just take the average of the last few cycles. So because the first cycle was so extreme. And you start to- Oh, so you're just doing cycle two and three here, to be clear. Just the averages of cycle two and three. And what you yeah. start to see is some really meaningful appreciation. And when I talked to Wences about this, how he explained it, which, I, which makes a lot of sense to me, is there are a lot of countries that will never look at Bitcoin credibly, even if they support it. The US may be one of those. But there is an increasing body of countries that will become dual currency. And they will look at their local currency, and then they will look at Bitcoin. And they will say, hmm. both of these two things are needed. One, when you're transacting on a daily basis for random goods and services. And two, when you need to buy a permanent asset that needs to have residual value, you'll use something like BTC. And I think that's a very powerful concept. And if you look at what this price chart could 
indicate is that if this thing starts to get to these levels of appreciation, it is going yeah. to completely replace gold and start to become something that has transactional utility for hard assets. And I think if you marry that with this worry that some folks have about dollar debasement, you start to see some really interesting opportunities. So I just thought that this was a interesting thing that he, that he here's our disclaimer, interesting thing that yeah, he put yeah. me on. I thought I'd share that with you. I'll publish this on Twitter, but that's your crypto corner for the year, folks. I think it's really interesting how the crypto community is getting organized into uh, basically a lobby to advocate for its interests because it's they've the been biggest so, lobby in America. Did you know yeah, that? They've been so targeted over the last few years because Gensler and Warren have been on a crusade to basically make crypto illegal or drive it offshore. Well, every action has a equal and opposite reaction. And now the crypto people have basically had a political awakening and realized they have to get involved in the political system. Yeah. Just as a matter of defense, self-defense. Shout and out SBF. He's, so they're getting he's a pioneer. Well, not like that. I mean, that guy. No, was I mean, a he crook. was dropping money on everybody. Yeah. Never yeah did you guys he hear was, this? Did you hear this rumor that he was doing that uh, to basically push for regulatory capture? Remember? Yeah. I think it's did a, you guys, I mean, this a nuanced point. Did yeah, you guys hear this rumor? Point, yeah. Did you guys hear this rumor that SBF was going to put a billion dollars into the election and convince Tom Brady to run as a Republican? And give, no, give the billion to Trump. Oh, sorry. Give the billion to Trump. He was going to give Trump a billion to not run. Okay. I'm, and then get Tom Brady to run. I mean, this person had delusions of grandeur. He thought he was a Jedi Knight, uh, and he's like literally in Jabba's palace right now. I don't know what this, I mean, what a lunatic he was. I mean, talk about delusions of grandeur, Sachs. This guy thought he would just drop a billion dollars and convince somebody not to run for government. I think we're going to, I think we're going to get a regulatory, you know, back to the young people we talked about in the previous story. I think the reason they're attracted to crypto is because it doesn't have government control. And since if you don't trust the government and you see the government over and over and over again, cover things up or the grift or make decisions that are not in your generation's best interest, why wouldn't you opt out of their financial system? And you know what? There's a lot of them and they have, and they're getting organized to your point, Sachs. I think we're going to have a crypto framework and it's worth probably five points in this election. What do you think, Sachs? How many points is being the pro crypto candidate worth in this election? One, two, three points of votes? Four points? It's it's got to be some to, significant. It's, no. it's hard to if young quantify, people show up, it'll be it'll be it could be five hundred basis points. I mean, young people do not show up to vote because there isn't an issue that they care about. Correct. But there's fifty million Americans that own crypto. Fifty five zero. Okay, so if ten percent of them are like, let's say that's their single no, issue, Jake, that's no, five Jake, million votes. No, no, no. There's a there's a plausible case where 40 million of those folks show up because you're talking about a structural part of their wealth creation, right? So, for example, like, you know, Biden, President Biden talked about giving people a head start by eliminating their debt. That's a narrow issue. And the reason it's a narrow issue, there's just as many people that don't have debt and just as many people that paid off their debt. And it creates a lot of haves and have nots, right? Hmm. And there's all these rules around who will get the debt relief, etc. You end up touching four or five million people maximum. But if there are 50 million people who have now decided to have at least a hedge against the establishment and the traditional financial system, and you are threatening to take that wealth away, yeah, I could see how 80% of those folks show up to the ballot box and say, all right, which one of you will just leave me alone? And if the answer is President Trump, then they're all going to vote for President Trump. I think this is like such a great issue for uh, political candidates to embrace. And it's just such a simple framework. I've said it a dozen times. Create a sophisticated investor test. Let a thousand flowers bloom. People can make whatever crypto projects they want. But to buy it, you just have to take a simple test like a driver's license so that you don't risk your entire net worth or whatever. If you do, you're an informed buyer of crypto. Just make a sophisticated investor test and let's move on. Chamath, just since we're in Crypto Corner, before we leave Crypto Corner, when is my ape going to be worth money again? When will my ape go back up? <laughs> Never. Okay, so my ape's not coming back. Okay, so I guess I shouldn't have done that. All right. Oh, wait, ladies. how's, how's uh, SaxCoin doing? We had SaxCoin and we had... Um, oh, God, was it my coin went crazy, but that was a pump and dump scheme that we had nothing to do with. I will never sell you a coin until I do. I just want to let everybody know that. <laughs> if you get a DM from me, I am not selling JCoin. Until you hear it first. I would literally do an angel investing coin immediately if there was a framework for it. 
it would be the greatest idea ever to have like a J coin and I could just like put it into startups and then people could buy and sell it and be like this ongoing evergreen venture. Where's my J DAO? I, well, I, I love DAOs yeah. and I love, I love the idea of a, of an angel investing coin, but man, a startup coin would be brilliant. Yeah, the Jason coin is basically at zero. It man, it it was worth the the Sax coin is, all, is down to eight grand. Yeah, 8, to be clear, US I didn't have anything to do with Sax coin either, but I was more amused by it than anything else. Yeah, well, my um, friend decided to tell everybody <laughs> he was going to buy some, and then straight to the moon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's pretty mooned. funny. Uh, I, it's hilarious. I have some. Uh, I've only we've only bought crypto twice. We have some Doge. Uh, which I bought during like the, our, our Doge phase a couple of years ago. And then uh, my wife presently bought Bitcoin, you know, at a very low price when everybody was talking around it around Thanksgiving. And uh, my, my, her Bitcoin went phenomenal. And my Doge is at break even now. So I've spent two years just on the pendulum. But who knows? Maybe Doge will become a thing again. I love Doge. 